Hey YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of With Zero Percent. Go to the zero percent.net as you see the website before you. Just scroll down and go ahead and select one of these options, one of these tiers, one of these plans to get started so you can learn how to put yourself in a better position when it comes to estate planning in the field of trust law. Today we're going to talk about injunction, travel injunctions. I have with me today my liaison, Mr. Isaiah, he's the guy that does all the injunctions for us. So whenever you put in, when you put in your application to get that done in your state and in your county, he's going to give you a consultation on how to do that. Plus, he'll make sure all the documentation is put together so that way you can file it with the proper authorities. And those authorities are, and you know it, if you are part of the senior course, we talk about who are you actually submitting the injunction to? And that is the constitutional officers, such as the attorney general, the governor, the sheriff, and the chief justice. What's going on, Isaiah? What's, how you doing out there? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. I'm ready to uh, get into this injunction talk. Yeah, I found a video of the very first guy who was added to the infamous do not stop, do not detain list. And that is Charlie Sprinkle. He found himself in a situation where he was pulled over. He didn't have a license. You know, he does have some knowledge and understanding of what a license is and what it, who it belongs to, who needs to have one. And that is not, it's not a no, it's not a secret. I mean, if you are a driver and you're earning money commercially, then you need a license. But if you are operating an automobile and just traveling, then you don't. Um, that's how it, that's how it works. But the thing is, was we're in what's called um, after 1928 Chapter 11 reorganization bankruptcy um, reorganization through the United States. And that's when everything changed. The money changed license started to come about why because we are now in a state of emergency war powers so everything has to be licensed everything has to be charged because they're bankrupt so you what you have is sub corporations which is the name on the license under another corporation which is the federal government corporation you can look that up in 28 usc 3001 so Charlie Sprinkle was pulled over by officers for not having a, I believe it was a license plate and also not a, a driver's license to be presented when they asked him for it. So they gave him a ticket and what he ended up doing was suing the governor. He also sued the governor's wife. Why? Because she was an accomplice being the fact that the governor did not uphold his oath, which is to uphold the, the rights in the Constitution and to defend the people. Charlie Sprinkle was one of those people because he was a Californian. He's a national of California. So the governor has to protect its inhabitants. It was about, I say, a four or five year case. Anyone can look up the case, um, but we're going to get to that video and talk about his perspective on what happened and the outcome of the case and how he was the very first person to be on the do not stop, do not detain list. So if you want to do this process, like I said, go to the senior course, you'll get the documentation and the video webinars that goes along with it, show you how to actually uh, submit this thing the proper way. This is all done by what we call the rule 5.1 constitutional challenge. And this is the federal rules of civil procedure. However, this does not apply to you if you are pulled over by a police state officer, state trooper, and they give you a citation and you got to go to the local county court to resolve it. That means you need to find out how to defend yourself with this information in the state, um, on the state level. So I'm going to read this to you just to give you a quick synopsis of what this is. So Rule 5.1, the constitution, constitutional challenge to a statute. 
a citation or whatever ordinance the police officer gives you on the actual ticket, that's the statute that we are fighting against, that we are asking the attorney general to do a constitutional challenge on why this statute goes against the constitution because the attorney general is the one who is approving all of these statutes on the record year after year. So what it says here is a party that files a pleading, written motion or other paper drawing into question the constitutionality of a federal or state statute must promptly, number one, file a notice of constitutional question stating the question and identifying the paper that raises it. Okay, so that would be your citation and whatever statute or code the officer provided on that document on the side of the road, that is what your question. A, a federal statute is questioned and the parties do not include the United States, one of its agencies or one of its officers or employees in an official capacity. Or B, a state statute is questioned and the parties do not include the state, one of its agencies, or one of its officers or employees in an official capacity. Okay. Now, down below, it's just going to tell you how to serve it. It says you need to serve the notice and paper on the Attorney General of the United States if it is a federal statute in question, or one of the state Attorney Generals if a state statute is questioned by certified or registered mail. We prefer registered mail because you will guarantee that it gets there. There is an amount of money that you um, state when you are mailing this off as far as insurance. So registered mail when it comes to this particular thing is what we recommend. Isn't that right? Right. So that's all they have to say here about the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 5.1. But like I'm telling you, it is all codified on the state level. You can find it. I'm in Florida, so you can find it right here on the Attorney General's website. Miss Ashley Moody, right? Constitutional challenge notice. What does she want you to do? The statute that supports 5.1 is 86.091. It is also in the Florida Rules of Civil Procedure. That is what we're talking about. And they made it the same thing. Rule 5.1, subsection A2. And all they want you to do is email your documents uh, to this address here. But like the law said, if it is a state or federal, you need to do it certified or registered. So what are they doing? They're leading you astray. They're making sure that you, that they are giving themselves an out. This is why you have to know what federal says, what state says, and what local government says. So in this case, you are going to do it via mail. You're not going to email it. This is just to show that the Attorney General in Florida on the state level does recognize Rule 5.1. All right. Now, what's more interesting, uh, before we play the video for Charlie Sprinkle, I'm going to look at the Jackson County, Florida, uh, their codes. Codes of Ordinance and Enforcement under Chapter 18. This is going to be very interesting. Uh, you know what? I guess before I do that, I need to show you the actual Constitution of Florida. This is the 1838 Constitution. Uh, there is only three sections that you really need to pay attention to when it comes to your rights and traveling. The first section will be Section 4. Section 4, the freedom of speech and press. It says every person may speak, write, and publish sentiments on all subjects, but shall be responsible for the abuse of the right. No law shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. 
In all criminal prosecutions and civil actions for defamation, the truth may be given in evidence. If the matter charged as defamatory is true and was published with good motives, the party shall be acquitted or exonerated. The reason why this is so important, in my particular process of filing and serving the injunction, I teach to draft your injunction in the form of trustee minutes so that way your rights are protected within trust. From there, you would take those minutes and publish it in a local newspaper, particularly the same county where the sheriff is that you are going to file your injunction with. Okay, and that has everything to do with publishing your sentiments. This is a law that will never ever go away. It is constitution. You do not want to riot, destroy things to voice your opinion. You want to publish your opinion and put it in the paper. The second one that you want to pay attention to for your injunction is section nine, due process. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law or be twice put in jeopardy for the same offense. Now, I'm going to show you how the officers are doing this when they pull you over. Or be compelled in any criminal matter to be a witness against yourself. And that is what's happening. They pull you over, you get a citation, and then you show up in court, and then you sit before a judge, and you try to figure out if you could pay or if you have to do payments or whatever. Now, what, what just happened was you have just made yourself a witness against yourself in court because there was no officer there testifying. Um, how is it that you're being twice put in jeopardy for the same offense? Any ideas? You got an idea on that one, Isaiah, how they're doing that? Twice double jeopardy? Double jeopardy, yes. Nothing's coming to mind right now. Real simple. This is where we go back to chapter 18 of the Code of Enforcements. So back here in the Jackson County Code of Ordinance, we're going to show you how they've placed you twice in jeopardy for the same offense and um, where you're being compelled to testify against yourself. So... Let's read this. I'm going to start with A, definitions. That way we understand what we're talking about. Okay. Definitions. The following words, terms, and phrases when used in this section shall have the meanings ascribed to them in this subsection, except where the context clearly indicates a different meaning. Code enforcement officer means any designated employee or agent of the county whose duty it is to enforce codes and ordinances enacted by the county. Employees or agents who are designated as code enforcement officers include, but are not limited to, code inspectors, law enforcement officers, animal control officers, or fire safety inspectors. Designation, as a code enforcement officer does not provide the code enforcement officer with the power of arrest or subject the code enforcement officer to the provision of Florida statute subsection 943.085 through 943.255. Nothing in this section amends, alters, or contravenes the provisions of any state administered retirement system or any state supported retirement system established by general law. Okay, so we understand when they say code enforcement officer, our people that we're dealing with here, law enforcement officers are included in that. Okay, so let's go down. It says law enforcement officers means 
any person who is elected, appointed, or employed full-time by any municipality or the state or any political subdivision thereof, who is vested with the authority to bear arms and make arrest, and whose principal responsibility is the prevention and detection of crime or the enforcement of the penal, uh, criminal, traffic, or highway laws of the state. All right, now we got a preface as to what we're talking about. Let's go down to B. Authority to issue citations. Any law officer, any law enforcement officer and or code enforcement officer is hereby empowered to issue citations to any person when based upon personal investigation. The officer has reasonable cause to believe that the person has committed a violation of a duty enacted county code or ordinance. C. Ordinances enforced and penalties assessed. All county codes and and or ordinances are enforced by this section by citation to the appropriate county court of the county, except where prohibited by law or statute. And then they say that these violations cannot exceed $500. So basically, layman's, they're trying to give me as much as they can in that one citation? Up to $500, yes. Now, they can give you one citation that's up to 500 and then they can give you another citation for a different code for up to 500 and so on and so on. And people have seen this all over the internet where people are pulled over and they're arguing with the police. They don't want to present identification. That's one. There's 500 bucks right there. They don't want to comply and put the car in park or roll the window down. That's another 500 bucks and the list goes on. License plate, you know, special uh, tags and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. They're just attracting so much attention to themselves and it's really unnecessary. Let's go to section D, issuance of a citation. Um, it says a code enforcement officer or a law enforcement officer is authorized to issue a citation to a person when, based upon personal investigation, the officer has reasonable cause to believe that the person has committed a civil infraction in violation of a duly enacted the county code or ordinance and that the county court will hear the charge. Okay, there we go. The county court will hear the charge. So that means that the law enforcement officer has to abide by the rules of court. If I were to sue you, Isaiah, if I were to sue you, I would have to first file a complaint, an affidavit of complaint, and then serve you on it and prove to the court that I served you in order for them to give me a legitimate case number. And then yeah. they give you a, a date and then we both show up and we dish it out. Right. Right. But it sounds like those uh, uh, police officers or law enforcement, um, when they stop you, they're not doing that. Nope. Nothing at all. Look at number two. Prior to issuing a citation. It says prior. Do we need to define that word? I think not. That means before. Issuing a citation, a code enforcement officer or a law enforcement officer, one who bears arms and who can arrest, they shall provide notice to the person that the person has committed a violation of a code or ordinance and shall establish a reasonable time period within which the person must correct the violation. Such time period shall be no more than 30 days. So this is what I mean when I've been saying in the past 
the technology that is within the law enforcement's um, vehicles, I'm going to say vehicles because they're driving for commerce, right? They're collecting money. So their vehicles have all these cameras and detections and infrared where every car that goes by them, it'll pull up the license plate and give you the status of registrations and suspensions and all of that. They have a choice to go through and say, okay, I'm going to take this one. Now, in the event before they pull you over, they can immediately submit within their computer uh, an affidavit of complaint that this person is driving without such and such, or this person did this rolling, a California rolling stop or run a stop sign or a stop light or whatever. And immediately the magistrate system will kick back an approved affidavit. Now they can pull you over and uh, provide you that approved affidavit of complaint and give you the citation attached to it. But the law says here that they just need to give you the affidavit of complaint, which is their notice, and give you 30 days to correct. Now, how do you correct something like that in 30 days? Stay clean for 30 days and put it in writing. Now, that reasonable uh, notice is in the Constitution. It's right here. Section 12, searches and seizures. Uh, <laughs> seizure, I said seizure. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects, such as automobiles, against unreasonable searches and seizures, and against the unreasonable interception of private communications by any person or, or any means shall not be violated. No warrant. Now, the word warrant is synonymous with citation and violation. Okay, the, that word is synonymous with those other words. So you can just say no citation shall be issued except upon probable cause supported by affidavit, particularly describing the place or places to be searched. So we need to see and start demanding from the officers where is your affidavit of complaint approved by the court magistrate to pull me over to support your probable cause before you give me a citation? That's what you have to argue on the side of the road. And if you, you just, you don't even have to argue it. Just say it calmly. Okay, no problem. Can I see your um, supported affidavit, please? They'll say, what are you talking about? You take them to section 12 and say, well, according to this and according to your own charter that you're hired to follow, I need to have this and you need to give me 30 days to fix this before you give me a citation, right? So that is something that you want to remember in the back of your head. Now, like I said, I wanted to clarify double jeopardy. So when they pull you over, Without that affidavit of complaint, that is them acting as judge and stating that they don't have to do that. Here's your citation anyway. It's a summons. We're summoning you to court. That's an order. That's one jeopardy right there. Then you go to court and for the same offense, they issue you a $500 fine and say, oh, you cannot leave until you pay this with your debit card or credit card right here, right now. Otherwise, we are suspending your, your license. That's twice double jeopardy. You cannot do that. So this is why putting a trust together and placing your estate, uh, your ins legis, which is the full birth name that's the government name placing all of that inside of a private trust private express trust 
and linking that private express trust with all of your assets and sides, all automobiles, guns, uh, gold, silver, all of your assets that you plan to pass on, you place it in trust and you list it within your injunction. If you are pulled over, uh, well, the injunction is not is, is, is going to protect you from being detained. But if an officer decides to give you a citation, at least now you know how to deal with it in court. If you were to continue reading, this will tell you to always answer a citation within 10 to 15 days. Well, Avery, what happens if I get pulled over and I have my injunction paperwork on me and the officer is not trying to see or or listen to my paperwork or what I'm telling them. Yeah, we don't we don't even want to give them paperwork. If they pull us over being ignorant of the do not stop, do not detain list that they have already searched on the license plate because it's attached to your name or the trust name, then you just know that you're dealing with an ignorant officer. And he just wants to collect his uh his quota, give them the license, let them write your ticket, and on the on it you write no contact, no contract. You send it in with your uh, your discovery, your five point one challenge, and then they will get dismissed because the officer cannot prove that he followed due process. No arguing on the side of the road. Be quiet as all get out. Be quiet. Just, yes, sir. Okay. Here you go. Ask him for his affidavit of complaint that goes along with the citation. If he doesn't understand that, just tell him, I, I advise you check with your superior and your sheriff on that, but go ahead and do what you got to do. And if you want, I've even heard people say, and including Charlie Sprinkle, uh, he said, look, you, you go ahead and give me a Citation, if you want to, but your your bond is going to be up for, for at least five years in a, in a federal court case. Do you want to deal with that? A lot of times they don't. It's not even worth it. They don't make that much to do that. So let's go ahead and play the video for Charlie Sprinkle. And we'll come back and discuss a little bit more on the injunction. I highly advise all of you to go and look at the case that is on the internet. Here we go. Welcome. Time second thought. I'm William Wagner, your host. We got a great show for you tonight. Yeah. With me today here in the studio is Charlie Sprinkle. Charlie, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Charlie, do you have a driver's license? No, sir. I haven't. I don't drive commercially. You don't drive commercially, I see. So you don't need a driver's license? If you're not being paid, you, there's no no need, need no need for a driver's license. So if I was getting paid to haul goods and services, or I you, was a taxi you, driver, you would have to have I, a driver's license. That's commerce. That's commerce, but you don't <coughs> drive in commerce, so you haven't had a driver's license for how many years, Charlie? Thirty-seven years. What happens, Charlie, when the police pull you over and they think you're speeding or you didn't signal? Well, now they just shake their finger at me or tell me to have a nice day. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Well, let's let's see. I, as a cop, I, I pull up. I say, may I see your driver's license, please? I don't have one. Um, why don't you have one? You're driving a car. I don't want one, and I'm not driving. I'm traveling. I see. Um, well, what if I just take you to jail? Fine with me. But we'll be hooked to the hip. Hooked, we'll be hooked at the hip for the next five years in federal court. In federal court, so you're yeah. going to sue me, the police officer, if I take you to jail because you don't have a driver's license. Yes, sir. I think the judge will rule in my favor. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, so that's how it goes. That's how it goes. And you had one of those cases, Charlie, didn't you? I, f I filed suit in 1975 against uh, 16 state officials, including Governor Reagan and all of their wives. And all of their wives? Yes, sir. When the officer pulls his red lights on you, he's declaring an emergency. That's a felony when there is no emergency. So he's already violated his, his job 
oath of office when he turns his red lights on to stop you. And then in my case, <clears throat> if he interferes with my right to travel, he's violating the Constitution of the United States. Wow. He becomes an imposter in the office of, uh, he, he becomes a poster, it becomes a poster, imposter in his office. And therefore he's taking his wages under false pretenses. And uh, that's fraud. And you've taken people to court? Yes, sir. Did Mrs. Reagan like being served? Yes, sir. We served her as she was backing out of her driveway in the limousine. Did, did she like it when they oh, served she, her? Oh, she was having a hissy fit. As a matter of fact, the wives <coughs> didn't like being charged with the fraud at some, for something their husbands had done. So why did you, why did you name Mrs. Reagan... I mean, even Reagan didn't pull you over, and he didn't hire the CHP officer. I wrote Mr. Reagan an, uh, a letter and requesting him to protect me from, from the conspiracy to violate my rights. And did he protect you? No, he refused in writing. Oh. So he violated his oath of office. He became an imposter in the governor's office, and his wife was his, uh, <coughs> is a... Uh, same as driving a getaway car for a bank robber. She's accessory after the fact. Wow. And uh, they tried to get that dismissed in federal court three different times, and they failed all three times. And then all they could do then was make a deal. Wow. Well, I, I got to take my hat off to you, Charlie, because uh, I don't think I've talked to anybody that's ever sued uh, a governor and his wife and one, did they pay you money, or what? How did that resolve? Uh, but, but they couldn't get they couldn't get the the uh, case dismissed out of the federal court, so they sent a black limousine down to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys got out of the back doors of the car, dressed in very dark suits and sunglasses, and came to my door. Of course, I had a rifle set in front of the door because I was expecting to be assassinated <laughs> over this deal. Yeah. I was only 35 years old, and I was the only one in California at the time fighting a driver's license. So I expected to be found face down in a ditch someplace, and so I was well armed. <clears throat> anyway, they came to the door, and they said, Mr. Sprinkle, we can assure you that you will have full run of the road if you do not pursue the lawsuit any further. I said, fine. I'll take that under advisement and we'll see what happens. And after another f few words, they decided to get in the car and go home, or wherever they came from. So I immediately went out and got into my <coughs> yellow sports car and went out onto the highway and found me a highway patrolman, and they was doing 65 at the time. It was a speed limit. And I cranked my little yellow car up to about 90 mile an hour, went by them blowing my air horns. <laughs> and uh, of course they, pursued me <laughs> immediately. Yeah, I would expect that, Charlie, yeah. <laughs> and they, I pulled off the side of the road, and I said, <clears throat> I said uh, what can I do for you? And he says, what are you doing? I said, I was doing about 90. And he said, what, what's your name? You got a driver's license? No. Oh. What's your name? My name's Charlie Sprinkle. Well, Mr. Sprinkle, we just stopped to see if we could be of any assistance to you. <laughs> I said, well, no, I think I can get along all right by myself. And he said, well, have a nice day. <laughs> so I left him in a cloud of dust. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they didn't say anything about the fact you admitted you were doing 90 in a 65 zone? No. They didn't say a word about it? Yeah, I've been told I'd be left alone if I didn't pursue the suit. <laughs> so someone put the word out, and you let, you let the Reagans the off the suit, and you're free to go. So I... <clears throat> I just did not pursue it. I can I can reinstitute it tomorrow if I want to. Refile for twenty five dollars. How long were you in federal court before this little incident took place? About four or five months. It took a month for him to um, default, and I went to the judge. He asked for a. Uh, Here I can. All right. So, but this, this does, doesn't this show in, in your system, doesn't it? You don't have any warrants for any traffic violations. No, I'm either. saying my, the do not detain shows on in your system. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm not allowed to put you in cuffs right now. Yeah, but All you're right. not supposed to give me no tickets either. I can give you tickets for the violation that I observe right now, which is the speed, Officer, the absolute, suspension, I and for everything you, else. You right? really cannot give like me a ticket. It's going to get If you have out. any issues with it, call the court. I'll right, talk I will. it over, all right? No worries, okay? Yep.
Right. So, but this, this does, doesn't this show in, the, in your system, does it? You don't have any warrants for any traffic violations. No, I'm either. saying my, the do not contain shows on in your system. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm not allowed to put you in cuffs right now. Yeah, but uh, you're not supposed to give me no tickets either. I can give you tickets for the violation that I observe right now, which is the speed, Officer, the suspension, I and for everything you, else. You really right? cannot give like me a I ticket. Said, it's going to get If you have out. any issues with it, call the court. They'll right, talk will. it over, all right? No worries, okay? Yep. Yeah. There is Charlie Sprinkle, right? Which is pretty cool. Now, what's interesting is you can have your driver's license. Um, you can utilize that, or you can utilize a foreign driver's license, which gives you even further protection because an officer is looking for something to identify you with. You can go the route that Charlie Sprinkle is going and just not have one. Or let's say your driver's license is suspended and you do the injunction and you serve it properly and you're on the list. Um, you can go that way, however you want to do it. But I personally would say give them something. And I found here in uh, Tennessee that the attorney general there, they've put out a, a memo stating that foreign driver's licenses are welcome and you don't need an international driving permit to go with it. Did you ever think that we would find something like that coming from Attorney General Isaiah? Not at all. It says right here, there is no international driver's license. And that's true. There is no such thing as an international driver's license. It's got to be country specific says Tennessee does recognize driver's licenses issued by other countries. So in this specific Tennessee code, it states that under certain conditions, persons can legally drive in this state as long as they are in possession of a valid driver's license issued by another country. So let's say I'm in Tennessee, but I have a Delaware driver's license. Delaware is a country, right? Uh, North Carolina is a country. Panama is a country. You can have a Panama driver's license and use that in the state of Tennessee in any state within the union. It's just Tennessee is admitting to it. They're saying so that... All... Go ahead. What's all this flack that if I'm traveling in another state and CHP pulls me over or any type of law enforcement... And they give me uh, they give me grief that I pull out my California uh, driver's license. They give you grief that you pull out your California driver's license in another uh, state. In another Let's state. say like I'm just traveling or on vacation. Oh yeah, the only grief that they're going to give you is um, if they find out that you live there in that new state for over 30 days, they're going to want to say, well, you need to get a driver's license that is issued here, not yours from another country. And my response to that is, um, I'm only here temporarily. And if I run into that same officer again, I say, yeah, I understand all that. You want me to switch over, but you know, I tried it here. So it's, it's really no point. Um, I leave in a week anyway. So why, why go through all that hassle? They leave you alone. You got to have some kind of wordplay to go along with them. But you're mm -hmm. right. If you give them an actual foreign driver's license out of the Geneva Convention, such as a Panama I, I, uh, driver's license, that question will never come up. You will always tell them, I am visiting for work here from Panama, and I'm going back home soon. Simple as that. That's why I got one. So right here, number one says the United States is a party to the 1949 Geneva United Nations Convention on Road Traffic, which authorizes signatories to issue an international driver permit. This treaty states that signatories may require drivers from other countries to possess an international driver permit along with a standard driver's license issued by a competent government authority. So Tennessee does not require 
the international driver permit. Tennessee law authorizes certain persons to drive in this state without obtaining a Tennessee issued driver's license if they are in possession of a license issued by another state or country. So here we are. That answers your question. You can have your California driver's license and drive in Tennessee forever with that. No need to get a Tennessee license. That's great. That's yeah, awesome. That so Tennessee is great for that. Um, and I am definitely filing my injunctions within the several counties of Tennessee, for sure. So with that being said, that is really all we wanted to talk about with you guys as far as the constitutional challenge injunctions. It is highly recommended that everyone does a travel injunction for the do not stop, do not detain, because officers are doing that. They're detaining you because you give them the free reign to do it without giving them proper notice to their boss, the sheriff. The sheriff is the president of your county, right? Right. So you must do it. And if all of us do it, the more of us that does it, guess what? Change happens within DMV. It's a, it's a possibility that DMV was shut down. We don't need it. It's a possibility that they're just like, okay, we don't need to do license anymore. We will do it how we did it before 1933. Not a lot of people were driving cars back then, but you get the point. Freedom comes back to the Republic. So yeah, I would, I would say, yeah, at least get, at least do one injunction. Um, you know, you don't have to file an injunction in every 50 states or every 50 state, um, but at least get one, you know, and I'm trying not to pull that card, but in this day and age and, and traveling and, you know, wherever you're going, if you're covered by the injunction, you could very well save your life or, or save a life of a loved one with these interactions with uh, law enforcement. That's very true. Very, very true. So, with that being said, thanks I did Isaiah for joining me on this. And guys, look, if you guys can uh, uh, go and get those injunctions put in, if you need help with it, we're here to help you. We are here to help you, okay? Um, if once you sign into the website, you'll be able to look at all of our member applications and get that started. Um, if you have any questions, contact our customer support at TZP Executive One at Proton.me. And if you have any questions within the website, uh, we have our tech support email address right there down below. All right. So with that being said, we're signing off and we'll see you guys in the next video.